Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Irene. I hope everyone is doing well. Today, I want to share my not so good experience with my current super fund and the lessons that I learned from my mistake. And I'll walk you through to my comparison process of the top five super funds rated by Canstar. Now let's get started. All right, our current super fund is with MLC, which used to be NAB's subsidiary until January 2020. And we were set up with a meeting by NAB's financial advisor and later on, she successfully persuaded us to switch our super from Host Plus, which is a much better fund, to MLC. And after that, we had meetings with her semi-annually for a year. All she did was talking up MLC's super and its insurance. Look at the graph, your super balance has grown a lot. But seriously, without a benchmark for reference, it's all nonsense talking. As long as we realize it's completely useless to pay someone who does nothing but selling their products, we cancel her service and stop seeing her. But even now, I still receive the statements indicating that if you have any questions, please contact your financial advisor, ABC, which is incredible. Two months ago, I logged into my MLC account and I found that I couldn't see my insurance cover. So I called the customer service and I turned out to be MLC Super and MLC Insurance are different companies now. And I was like, shouldn't I notify us in the first place? What's worse is that I don't even know how I can log into the other website to see my insurance cover. And apparently, you need to call the customer service and to get your customer number, which, by the way, is not shown in any statements whatsoever. So looking back, the whole matter, we definitely have fell into a sales trap. And here are the lessons that I learned from my mistake, and I hope you don't make the same. The first lesson that I learned is don't fall for the professional title. The financial advisor sounds very glamorous and professional, but this title doesn't necessarily guarantee that they will do the ethical deeds for your best interest. In January 2020, a law firm launched a class action lawsuit against National Australia Bank for delaying the move of $6.3 billion belonging to more than 330,000 super customers, a decision that allowed the big four banks' financial advisors to continue to charge lucrative fees and NAB is just one of them. Recently, you may have realized this kind of shocking headlines of the big four banks in Australia increase in frequency. The reason for this is the government has initiated a formal independent public inquiry, the Royal Commission, into the misconduct in banking, superannuation, financial services industry. Obviously, the main drive for the big four is the profit. And the advice provided by the financial advisor could be heavily biased by their monetary incentives, such as the sales target or commission, which makes the advice not 100% genuine. For my case, I shouldn't have trusted her that much. And the second mistake that I made is that I didn't dare to say no. You probably had the similar experience when a salesperson is trying to say something and you just couldn't say no. So I didn't say no to her, even that I realized what she was talking about was all MLC products. So don't be afraid to say no. When you realize what you're paying for, it doesn't bring you any value. And I should blame my listeners. I should have done more research by myself. It's shocking to see how it is rated by the real customers and things like many things, thieves and weak financial planners. Unfortunately, I can't rate at zero star, which is still too much. And also it takes me too long to get out of it. So lesson learned and time to move on to another super fund. And I started my research by using the resources like Canstar, Morningstar, Product Review and Individual Super Fund website. And during my process, I found that there are five main types of super funds from corporate super funds, public sector super funds, uh, retail super funds and industry super funds and self-managed super funds. Retail super funds are generally managed by the banks or insurance companies or wealth management companies. Industry super funds were originally started by trade union or employee associations, but nowadays most of them are open to the public, except some are still linked to a particular sector, such as the uni super is for those who work in the university or research sector. The main difference between retail and industry super funds is how they manage their profits. Retail super funds generally return the profits to the shareholders and investors, while industry super funds return their profits to their members, which makes industry super funds historically provide higher benefits to their members after taxes and fees. 
So I took the top five super funds that are rated by Kensta, and then I compared their fees, their investment options, their five-year investment performance, and the reputation and service level by the customer reviews and insurance options. And the five super funds that I'm going to compare are Host Plus, Australian Super, Sun Super, Big Super, and Q Super. Now, let me show you what I found. Let's compare the fees first, which is the most tricky part and the most important part. Imagine you and your employee inject money monthly to your super, hoping that it can help you to build your wealth as soon as possible. And it turned out to be the principal and the return just get eaten by admin fees, investment fees, and transaction fees, all different sorts of fees that stated in the tiny little words in the policy. So I try to dig as much as I can, but feel free to comment if I miss anything. The major fees normally include admin fee, which is a fixed number, for all different investment options and the investment fee. The portfolio that needs more active management will charge a higher fee and different fees like indirect cost ratio and other fees will be charged by different super funds. I give the fund that charged the highest fee a one point and the cheapest fund give it a five points. It looks like the Q super charges the lowest fee for the 50,000 super balance. Next, I test out the investment performance for the five-year investment horizon because the idea is not to switch from super to another super so my investment horizon with one super is at least five years onwards it looks like the sun super outperformed the rest of the four super funds on the balanced option so i'll give you the five points now let's look at their investment options host plus offers five different investment options and the first four options gives you different levels of control so they've got the pre-mix which they have already made the package with the fixed percentage in different asset classes. The sector investment option that allows you to determine the percentage of different asset classes in your portfolio. If you want more control, you can choose the individual manager investment option. You can choose the fund manager either from Macquarie to BlackRock. Or if you want completely control that you want to buy and sell some individual stocks you can choose the choice plus investment option which literally that you can do a real-time trading for the companies in axx 300 and now let's look at the australian super so it looks like it offers a similar tiers of options with host plus they offer the premix a diy mix and the member direct which is similar to host plus choice plus investment option the only option that they don't have to choose your fund manager which host plus have so for this particular reason i'll give australian super a four points and host plus a five points now let's look at the Sun Super. Sun Super offers 19 investment options by two main categories. They got the multi asset and the single asset. Obviously, multi assets allows you to invest in the fund that is a mix of different asset classes from stocks to cash to fixed income and other asset classes. And the single asset allows you to invest in a particular asset class. Compared to the above three super funds, Big Super's investment options are simpler. They only have nine different investment options from mixed up with sort of multi assets and single asset options. Let's see the Q Super. Q Super has four different investment options from lifetime. Q Super, this lifetime option, instead of to let you to choose how aggressive you want your investment portfolio to be, so they automatically will set up and package up a asset class with different percentage based on your age and your super balance, which is very interesting. And they have the diversify options, of course, is the multi assets and the single sector options from different from cash to bonds, fixed income and international shares and Australian shares. And of course, the self invest is similar options as the host plus choice plus and Australian super option. I give different scores based on how extensive the investment options are from different super funds. But to be honest, if you are given too many options, you probably just ended up with the default option, the balance option. To me, how extensive the options are is probably not a big deal. As long as I can find a investment options that fits to my investment goals and my risk tolerance with the lowest fees possible, I'll be happy.
Now let's look at the customer reviews. I'm I'm always fascinated to see the detailed bad experience from the real customers about their super funds. And I believe people wouldn't take the time to write the long stories to warn the prospective customers to stay away from them. So it's a good reference if you want to compare not only super funds but other goods and services before you buy them from websites like Product Review. So out of the five super funds that they tested the transparency, customer service, rates, and fees. So I give the highest points to the highest rated, which is the VIX Super. And the next one, I give four to the Sun Super, and three points to Q Super, and two to Host Plus, and one to Australian Super. Many low rating reviews mentioned that how difficult that they claim from certain insurance and income protection is mostly mentioned one. And the premiums of the insurance is a big lump sum outflow from your super. Now let's look at the insurance. Normally that you will have the life insurance, the TBD insurance and the income protection insurance. These are the three main insurance that you will need. And some super, they will offer other extensive options such as the host plus, has special life investment insurance and the parental premium waiver and personal super plan insurance. So here I only give different marks based on their how extensive their options are. So it looks like Host Plus has the most extensive options. All the other four super funds, they either have life insurance or life and TBD combined insurance. And all of the five super offers income protection. For my case, we have life and TPD insurance and income protection with MLC, and we will probably stick with these basic plans to the next super. And people will ask, what is the sort of guideline of how much we should be covered? The reference guideline from the Barefoot Investor is 12 times of your annual pay for the TPD and life combined insurance and 75% of your pay as your income protection. Now let's have a look at what points I gave based on the five criteria. And it looks like the Q Super has 18 points, which is the highest, but the points are just going to give me a reference point because there are actually two bucks of my comparison method. One, it is based on a 50,000 balance on a default investment option, which is the balanced option. Normally it's 70% on stocks and 30% on the cash, fixed income and other asset classes. So it may not be the investment option that is you're looking for. The second bug of my comparison method is that I gave each criteria equal weight, which makes the total sum scores not accurate. For me, it's all about to grow my super as big as it can be. So there are two factors. One is the inflows, so which are the employee's contribution and your contribution and the investment options performance. And the outflow is the fees. So what I'm looking for here is to find a growth fund that offers a lowest cost as possible because I don't want my fund to pay any fund manager's expensive meals and wines. 35 year old has 50,000 in a fund and contributes 5,000 a year over 30 years with average return of 8%. A fund that charges 1% a year in fees and a fund charges 0.02% fee would have, wait for it, 226,000 difference in the super balance in 30 years. That's a lot of money. So the bottom line is that you need to find an investment option that suits for your age, your risk tolerance, and your investment goal with the lowest fees possible. So I'll put a comparison chart because different investment options charge it differently on my Patreon page. And hopefully, if you don't have time to check the PDS, the policy disclosure statements, that chart will help you. So what super funds are you currently with? And are you happy with it? Please leave a comment about any experience, good and bad, because I like to know. Well, thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next week. Bye.